Welcome to our case study section. And in this particular past exam question, we'll be looking at the question called Mako. And in this question, there are several requirements in here. So, for example, the part A is to evaluate the benefit. So, notice the word evaluate. So, therefore, I'm going to be applying the four steps approach okay, in our course to tackle this type of question. I would say to students that it is not all about the knowledge that you that students didn't pass this AAA exam, but it's all about the exam technique as well as knowledge. Okay, so we're going to combine this all together. So it evaluates the benefit, but specific to Maco, and therefore you need to bring the case information to the client's company called Maco. So if you notice the word co, and that will be a client's company, because for the audit firm, it will be and co later on. Of outsourcing the internal audit function. Okay, so uh, the client's company decides to outsource the internal audit function to the service organization. So you will have different answer, I mean from students to students, when answering the part A. Later on, because the students can uh, refer to uh, different ISAs, for example, using the work of others, uh, for example, using the work of internal auditors per the ISA 610. Alternatively, it's the ISA 402, as uh, all about the service organization. And also, you can use the common sense approach to tackle this particular one. I mean, when the client's company decides to outsource the internal audit function, the control environment the procedures and so on will change okay, uh, when operating inside the business in terms of the uh, internal control environment. And therefore, it will, certainly, <coughs> it will certainly have some implications specifically for benefits. So, for example, the MACO could reallocate the staff to other parts of the departments later on. Part boy then explains the potential impact on the external audit of Maco. So in other words, we're going to be seeing the impact on our audit firm rather than on the client's company called Maco. If the decision is taken to outsource the internal audit function, what will be the impact on the external audit? I mean, when we are thinking about this particular question, we are thinking about what does external audit actually do? For example, we will check the financial statements of a client's company and for the external auditor we can have for example the full substantive testing approach alternatively focusing on the control tests plus a bit of substantive tests all together so we're going to be seeing explain the potential impact okay and therefore we'll be using the full step approach okay in answering this type of question I will always say it to my students, for example, if you look at the mark allocation to part A, it's six marks here, and therefore include in your one paragraph, there should be four steps in there. So, for example, four sentences in there, possibly three to four sentences, that's the four step. And therefore, you will deem that one point equals to 1.5 marks, and sometimes two marks per point. And therefore, I would expect students to write three to four paragraphs in the part A, and also perhaps two to three paragraphs in part B. So do not write too much, okay, in this particular exam. You will not score very high if you write too much, but making sure that each type of questions that you follow are steps and you can maximize the number of marks uh, in, your, in your script. Part C is to recommend procedures could be used by the firm to quantify the financial losses suffered as a result of a fraud. I mean, from the previous recording, we've talked about the ISA 240, it's all about the fraud and error. And uh, the procedures that we look at would be uh, tailored for different types of fraud that we've seen, so for example, it's the financial reporting fraud or misappropriation of asset fraud. In this case, it's to recommend procedures, and we are given four marks, and that 
would equal to four point that we're going to write in the exam. So making sure that the audit procedure question still be one mark per point. So for each point that you've made, you need to include how to do it, which means your action and what to check, and what sort of documents that you can check, and why this would be the case. So in other words, uh, what sort of things that you're going to check in. Okay, so why are you going to check? Why are you going to do this? And so on. What is your objective? So in practical terms, in a professional term, it's called assertions. It's moving on to part of doc is to compare the responsibilities. Okay, we noticed the verb called compare, which means comparison. So for comparison type of question, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be including two steps in our answer. First of all, uh, we're going to be including our description and then add some details, possibly from the case. Compare the responsibilities of the external auditor and of management related to prevention and detection of fraud. Okay, so uh, as I said before, in the last parts of the section, they've talked about the ISA 240 related to the fraud. And the management will have the primary responsibility, whereas our auditor will have the secondary responsibility. We obtain uh, reasonable assurance as to whether or not the financial statements are free from material misstatements either due to fraud or errors or and errors. Okay, so make sure that you name the responsibilities in there. So what sort of things they're going to be doing and so on. Part two, we're going to be assessing the benefits and drawbacks in establishing an audit committee in a client's company called MACO. So in other words, assess this verb. Again, we'll be using the four steps approach. Okay, later on. And how many points are we going to write then for the part D number two? Four marks. Well, I would say using the four steps approach, you can include three paragraphs, okay, as the maximum when assessing the benefit and drawbacks. But how about for comparison? Well, again, you're going to deem 1.5 marks per point or two marks per point. So basically, you're going to be including two to three paragraphs, okay, in your answer. Because nowadays it's the computer based exam. So, with regards to the case information, so uh, I mean, we will be using the case information in our answer, and that's why we can control C and control V, copy and paste the case information from the case scenario down to our answer, down to our word processor directly to save us a bit of time. So we can write more, but don't write too much from my perspective then. I'll show you how in a second. I've structured this uh, particular question in an exam software like this. And this is the uh, exam software interface that you will see in your answer. So for example, when you're reading the case information, you can make certain highlights into different colours. And I would say to my students, for different parts of the requirements, for example, if you're answering to part A, we're going to highlight it in yellow, because that yellow colour would be the case information that we're going to relate back to our, to our answer later on. For part B then, you're going to be highlighting in green, for part C in pink, whatever colours you like. And then, Yes, sometimes you can use the strike through function, but you don't really have to do it. Very powerful is the scratch part. Okay, so you can copy the case information into the scratch part, but you don't really have to do it because you've got the word processor. So the response option on your left hand side, you've got the word processor here. And for the exhibit, don't forget about the exhibit because these sort of information that you can relay back later on into your answer. Don't easily close all, but you can do it because you've opened up all the exhibits and closed them all and you're going to reopen it later on. But uh, I would say if I were you, I would not uh, click on that. Flag for review. If you find this question very tough, you're going to move on to the next question, but review to flag this particular question later on, you can come back. But 
uh, if I were you, I would set the deadline for each of the requirement, first of all, okay, and by what times I should finish writing or typing your answer before you move on to the next of our requirement. And therefore, I will not flag it, okay, because the time pressure is very important. Uh, it's the key consideration in this particular exam. Now, let's dig into our question, because the answer that I provided, I've restructured the answer into different steps. I will talk to you through that later on. Let's look at the background of the case. It's called Maco. It's a large private company. Okay, so we are thinking about whether or not the company is going to go listed onto the stock exchange to become the public uh, listed company. Uh, so, which means the public interest company, public interest entity, or PIE, whose basis activity is, is immense management involving the organization of conferences, meetings, and celebratory events for companies. So it seems that the business is managing the event for on behalf of a client. And that's a little bit complicated because it certainly needs expertise and special employees who can coordinate the needs of a client altogether. But it's not particularly complicated in this particular industry, okay, at all. So in this particular industry, in practice, usually the clients would deposit certain amounts of money to the MACO before MACO would uh, do such things. And therefore, in receiving the money in advance from a client, it will recognize it as the contract liability in the account. Macro was founded 10 years ago by Danny and his sister, Stella, who still own the majority of the company shares. So in other words, this company is the family-based company. So for a family company, so usually what we are considering is its control environment. So uh, the possibility of management override is quite high. And therefore, when we are considering the control environment issues, later on when we set up the internal audit function, we'll be outsourcing it to the external third party that could improve the control environment a bit further. The company has grown rapidly and now employs more than 150 staff in 20 offices. So it seems that it's quite international. But we are, particular, we are not particularly sure whether this will be the case. But at the same time, we also said that if you've got one staff, for example, paying uh, per month for, I don't know, uh, 1,500 UK pounds, if you've got 150, 150 times by 1,500 uh, 1, UK pounds per month, for example, so there'll be huge amount of cash that you need to invest in this paying for the staff as the major costs. And therefore, there are too many staff in here, too many offices, and the need for cash that we need to consider that later on. So when you are reading the case, it's best for you to open up the scratch part and to highlight each sentence and to make your point Okay, in the scratch part, you, because you can't write anything on the screen. So that scratch part comes into being. Next one. You are a manager in the business advisory department of Flack & Co. As I said before, if you see Arns Co, and that will be the audit firm. You are the external auditor in this particular instance. Your firm has been engaged to provide internal audit surveys to Maco. Okay. Now, you're providing internal audit service. That's fine now. In your initial conversation with Danny and Stella, you discovered that currently there's a small internal audit team under the supervision of Lindsay. Okay. So as I said in the previous ISA, to for entities to outsource the internal audit function to the external third party, this is not allowed unless there's co-sourcing there. And in this case, yes, co-sourcing. 
So in other words, uh, within the MACO, there's a team for the internal audit, and MACO decides to uh, outsource the internal audit to our firm, and this, is, this would be absolutely fine. Okay, because it's the post sourcing, they've got their own staff to do the internal audit work all together with ours, and this would be fine. But Lindsay is a recently qualified accountant. So you're going to question about her competence when doing the work. So, therefore, if the internal audit function is outsourced later on, we will see that quality may be improved because the expertise, uh, the external expertise, we can enjoy that later on. Before heading up the internal audit department, Lindsay was a junior finance manager, and the members of the internal audit team will be reassigned to roles for the finance department once your firm has commenced the provision of such services. So in other words, Lindsay was quite junior, and therefore we will question about its independence. if the internal audit is done purely by the internal audit team of MACO. As I said in the previous recording, when we go through the ISA, we've seen that the independence we can talk about, so for example, the web not the internal auditor, we report to the audit committee or to the finance director. If we were to say that the internal auditor reports directly to the finance director, this is not independent. At the same time, we'll be seeing where not that staff, which means the internal auditor, can freely check any areas in the company. If the answer for this is yes, they can freely check any areas in the business, and that could be fine, it's quite independent. But such a junior position, finance manager, I will question where not Lindsay is available to check any areas in the company. So it seems that is not the case. And therefore, by outsourcing the internal audit function to another party, to our firm, will certainly improve its independence later on. And other benefit will be the roles can be reassigned. That's very important. So in other words, it will save costs or to improve the efficiency of other staff doing other parts of the job later on. Okay. MACO is not the existing client of your firm. Okay. So, if this is the case, then we are not responsible for the external audit of this particular client. And this will be absolutely fine, okay? We don't really need to consider, so for example, whether or not from the ethical point of view, uh, the outsourcing the internal audit function to our firm will be banned. This, this will not be banned, okay, in this particular case. And to gain further understanding with company, you held a meeting with Lindsay, and we will be seeing the notes, okay, here, as the exhibit number one. The internal audit team has three employees, including Lindsay, reports directly to the finance director. As I said before, because you report to the finance director rather than reporting it to the audit committee, it seems that they are not independent to operate as the internal audit team. The other two internal auditors are currently studying for their professional examinations, which means not very competent. The team was set up two years ago and initially focused on introducing financial controls across all of the MACOS offices. So initially, they focus on the financial controls. The financial controls that they've introduced two years ago may be weak. Another possibility would be biggest financial controls have already been introduced by these staff already. So financial parts may be okay, so where not other parts of the controls may be introduced later on in this particular entity. Nine months ago, the finance director instructed the team to focus their attention to, on introducing operational controls to achieve cost savings due to the cash flows problem suffered by the company. So it seems that the company has a cash flow problem. 
And wait not, the company still has cash to support its operations. So, for example, more than 150 staff in more than 20 offices, and also outsourcing the internal audit function may be quite expensive as well. But we are not particularly sure because you've got a cash flows problem here. The team does not have time to perform much testing of the financial as well as the operational control. So, so in other words, the teams may not find out particular fraudulent transactions happening inside the business. And therefore, it's the management's uh, responsibility, it's the primary responsibility of management to be responsible for such implications. In the course of her work, Lindsay finds many instances of management policies not being adhered to. So in other words, it's the management override. And the managers of each location are generally reluctant to introduce controls as they want to avoid bureaucracy and paperwork. So in other words, the control system inside the MACO is absolutely weak. As a result, Lindsay's recommendations are, oft, are often ignored. Okay, so in other words, Lindsay is not quite independent to check any areas that she wants because her status was not quite senior enough to influence other parts of the company to follow her advice. Three weeks ago, Lindsay discovered a fraud operating at one of the offices while reviewing the procedures relating to the approval of new supplies and payment made to supply. So it seems that this will be one type of fraud, so which means payment to the fictitious supplier. So uh, in our previous section, when we've talked about the ISA 240, yes, so we've got certain procedures, for example, inspecting the supplier statement reconciliations and to trace it back to the supporting business document to see whether or not the transactions are genuine in nature. So we'll be seeing later on in designing the procedures in relation to that. The fraud involved an account manager authorising the payment of invoices received from the fictitious suppliers. Okay, so the account manager created the fictitious or fake suppliers and then authorising the payment, so which means uh, to approve the payment to be made to, to that particular fictitious suppliers with payment actually be made into the account manager's personal bank account. So in other words, it's stealing money, it's misappropriating asset in the business to his own personal bank account, his or her bank account. Lindsay reported the account manager to a finance director and the manager was immediately removed from the office this situation has highlighted to Danny and Stella that something needs to be done to improve the controls within their organisation and that's why uh, we'll be seeing the requirements later on. Now, let's look at the exhibit number two then. Danny and Stella are considering taking legal action against Macco's external audit provider. It's called Manhattan Arms Co. because their procedures did not reveal the fraud. Okay, now when talking about the fraud responsibilities for that, we need to quote or we need to refer to as the ISA 240. You need to be very familiar with these particular standards that we've talked you through in the last recording. So Manhattan and Co. seems that it would be the external auditor. But for the external auditor, they are only responsible, I mean, they have secondary responsibility in detecting the fraud and errors uh, of the happening within the financial statement if uh, they are material to the account. But we are not particularly sure that their payment to fictitious suppliers would be material or not. Done is they are deciding whether to set up an audit committee. Okay, 
So it seems that if it is a public listed company, in most circumstances, that would be a requirement uh, in, the, in the stock exchange um, to set up the audit committee. Under the regulatory framework that it operates, Macro is not required to have an audit committee, and that's fine. But a disclosure note explaining whether an audit committee has been established is required in the annual report. So although it's not setting up the audit committee, it is right in its nature because uh, it doesn't necessarily have to do it. Okay. And therefore, in our requirements, let's see then, outsourcing the internal audit function will be the benefit to the client, and then if the internal audit function is outsourced, what will be the impact on the external audit? And the procedures in reviewing that fraud and responsibilities of management and external auditor related to fraud and benefits and drawbacks of establishing an audit committee. So these are the things that will be covering. Now, SC number one evaluates the benefit of outsourcing the internal audit function will be the benefit to a client's company. So here, I will use my own four steps approach here. First of all, you need to include a subheading as a step number one. So I will bold it and to underline uh, the subheading. And then as a step two, you need to describe the benefits or drawbacks. And this is good for a company and this is bad for a client. In step number three, you will need to say why. The key word I will use in our answer is that for benefit, it helps something, but for drawbacks, it will certainly harm something. Step number four then is the case information. So we're going to bring the information from the case. But here, we are talking about specifically the benefit. So don't talk about the drawbacks in your answer. Okay, you need to answer the requirement asked by the examiner. So let's see the first point. If I were to discuss, it would improve the quality of your, of your internal audit work. So how can we write our answer? You can't simply write your answer. Outsourcing the internal audit function will certainly improve the quality. If this is the case, there'll be no marks for this, or it'll be a maximum of 0.5 marks in your answer. You need to include four steps in there. Step number one is the subheading as the quality. How about for step number two then? You need to describe this will be the benefit. The quality, you can talk about the methodology or the staff, the quality will be good. So I would talk about the staff quality. So I would say the service provider will have good quality staff. Why this will be a case? Because they've got experience of financial reporting, auditing, commercial and business awareness. But you don't really need to include all these parts. So for example, you can name one of the parts. So for example, we've got expertise in financial reporting. That will be a staff quality. And why this is particularly important? Well, this is important because Currently, our company is suffering, or the client's company is suffering cash flows problems. And that's why improving the internal audit, reducing the amount of losses, will conserve our cash, and so on. So in other words, it would improve the efficiency of their work that they are currently doing. And you can also say that it impacts on the future uh, abilities to raise finance in particular. As a step number four, you will need to include the case information to support your claim. So here we are talking about the staff quality, but Lindsay and the team is part qualified accountant. So we're going to include that from the case information, for example, Lindsay being recently qualified, limited experience and majority of the junior members are not senior enough uh, to audit the areas in the company. 
So if you say that, so I will give you 1.5 marks to 2 marks for this particular paragraph, but in the exam, you don't really need to say to the examiner, this is the step 1, this is the step 2, this is the step 3, this is the step 4, and you don't need to underline this, you don't need to make it italic, or you don't need to bold it. But for the subheading, I would highly recommend my students to bold it and to underline it, and that's very important from the exam's point of view there. So after you made the first paragraph, please do remember, leave a line before you made the second paragraph. The second paragraph, I would like to talk about the authority. So, because currently, Lindsay is partly qualified accountant, and most of the staff are quite junior in nature, I would say that if you are the member in the internal audit team, so basically inside the organisation they are quite senior enough so their advice could be followed by other departments. So in this case it's not really the case, okay? And therefore I can talk about that. So as the step number one, I would provide the subheading is the authority. And then step number two, I will talk about why this will be a benefit. Well, I will say that they can trust and follow the advice. If the authority improves, and of course the recommendations can be followed by other parts of the department. So if the, as I said here, if recommendations from the independent source, which means the third party, has authority supported by senior management more likely to be followed by other staff. So that would be a step number two. Why this is important? Why this is important? Because they need to follow it, otherwise it's a waste. Because you spend lots of time in coming up the recommendations but others are not following it. And that would certainly be a waste. But here, because they are more likely to be followed, and that could be fine. And that would be the reason why this is good. As the step number four, you need to include from the case information there. So for example here, the case information said their recommendations are often ignored by other staff in different departments. And therefore you copy the case information and to support your point. The next one is where we're going to talk about the resources. Okay, I would like to talk about the resources. Because if you outsource it to the third party, others would do the work immediately. You don't really need to find relevant staff um, to do the work and to design the procedures and so on and so forth. You don't need to cultivate that experience at all because the external third party would do it immediately. So therefore, as the step number one, I would use the subheading as the resources. So the step number two, I would like to describe what would be the benefit. The, what would be the benefit is that it would become the resource base. Okay? It would increase the resource base okay, as an immediate increase in resource base. So why this will be a benefit? Because if I want to get the work done quickly, of course the work can be done quickly. The work is quick. So in other words, uh, the internal audit work can be quickly done on a timely and on a high quality basis. And why this is important? Because we can link that to the case information. So in a team, we only got three staff in the internal audit team with more than 20 offices. It's very tough for you to check all these areas. Okay? So therefore, it's, in, it, it's important to outsource it to any given third parties, for example, to our firm. The next point I would like to talk about is the focus point, okay, so uh, because uh, as I said before from the, from the case information, 
that we've seen before that uh, the final sector recently uh, decides to, uh, the internal audit team should focus on the operational issues to achieve cost savings. But uh, only three staff, of course, apparently, they can't really focus on what they're currently doing. And therefore, as a focus, focus on the work uh, that is desired by the finance director is, is important as a subheading. And why this, uh, what would be the benefit for that? So, for example, to cover different activities. So why this is important though? Well, because currently we are understaffed and by doing this, by outsourcing this, it's better focus on other jobs. So we can use the case information and bring that to our answer. I would say that uh, the recent finance directors claim want us to focus on operational controls and so on. And therefore by outsourcing this and we can have better focus on that. The final point I'd like to make is the relocation of staff because the staff, including Lindsay, can be relocated to other departments. So first of all, as a subheading, relocation of staff. And second, uh, because the internal audit function has been outsourced, internal control has been improved. So first of all, the benefit will be to improve internal controls And therefore, uh, the finance department, for example, uh, will have less problems as a result. So having less problems as a result, uh, we can relocate the staff to this department to do the job and more smoothly. So why this is the benefit? Well, the company can grow more quickly. Okay, if uh, the internal controls work fine. How about for a case information then? So the case information as the final step is including Lindsay and other staff to be relocated, reallocated to other departments to support the growth of the company, okay? So uh, these could be a points that you can make in your exam. Very, very important though. I mean, according to the tutorial notes, uh, other points can be made. For example, the Flack & Co, okay, which means our audit firm employees uh, may be more technically up to date, bringing new technology to the internal audit function and therefore, a stronger department can be formed as a result and making fraud less likely in the future and so on. So you can talk about that. This could be one of the benefit uh, to the Kai's company. How about for part boy then? It's to explain the potential impact to the external auditor, okay? Which means Manhattan and Co. So we're going to include four steps here. As a subheading, describe the point and the impact of this and um, bringing the case information similar approach that we've used in when we are talking about, when we are evaluating the benefit. And here we are explaining the potential impact. Again, four steps here. Now, impact on the external auditor. Of course, the clients would pay audit fees to the external auditor, and the external auditor, when they audit the, uh, the MACO's financial statements, they will have to go through 
the internal control systems of a macro company. So as the first point I'm going to make is about the reliance on fees, well, first of all, if the internal audit function is outsourced to our firm, the Manhattan Co., which means the external auditor, places reliance on our work. So in other words, uh, not only they will need to look at the uh, working papers, but they will need to spend more time to confirm whether or not the internal control of the macro is really improving or not improving. And therefore, perhaps more reliance will be placed on the internal audit than previously. Okay. So what will be the impact of this? And that's important. So we're going to say in the uh, step number three, the impact will be the fees charged by the external auditor, okay? affecting the fees charged by them, which means the audit fees charge. And case information then, I will always say it, from a practical point of view, the client may be short of cash. So a client or macro is short of cash. So whether or not uh, Maco can afford such payments, that would be questioned. The second point I would like to make as well, uh, with, with regards to the impact will be to time to implement the recommendations proposed by our firm. Because the internal audit function has been outsourced to our firm, we will implement or we will, sorry, we will advise the, the, the recommendations of how to improve the internal controls inside the macro, but macro would need time to implement those. So therefore, as a subheading, as a step number one, the step number two would be there might be changes to the system. But we are talking about the impact to the external auditor. And therefore, from the external audit firm's point of view, if there are changes to the internal control system, what they need to do is to document them and to evaluate these changes. So the audit methodology will be affected as a result. Um, Therefore, the impact will certainly be the amount of work that they're going to be doing. It will certainly affect the fees charged by the external auditor. I can always bring the case information. So, for example, Maco is, is in shortage of cash and may not be available in paying that fees and so on. The next point I'm going to come up is all about the control environment. Okay. So, because the internal audit is outsourced to our firm, the control environment may be improved in some way. So, the benefit, or I'm going to be explaining, describing your point, is that the control environment may be improved. And what will be the impact on the external auditor? Of course, the control environment is improved and therefore, the audit methodology will change as well. So the impact would be the audit method may change. And of course, affecting the audit fees charged by the external auditor. Bringing the case information then, of course, you can also say that it's short of cash and so on, but uh, I would say that the audit fees may be reduced. So although it's not 
really an information that copies from the original case, but you can add your imagination here because uh, the controls are good and therefore uh, the Manhattan and Co does not really need to use the full substantive testing approach and therefore it will reduce the amount of work done and therefore you will reduce the audit fees charged by the external auditor. The next point I'd like to come up with is the number four is all about the working papers because uh, the internal audit function is outsourced to our firm and therefore we, we may need to provide the audit working papers directly to the external auditor. And therefore, it will need to assess to working papers regarding the internal audit done by our firm. Our firm is called Flat Co. Okay. So, what would be the impact on this? Uh, the impact could be we're not timely access to working papers and especially when they have access to our working papers they will also need to test them on their own and therefore it may in increase their test of controls needed. And therefore, as the final step here, uh, it will certainly affect the external audit fee charged by the Manhattan Co. That's very important though. And of course, according to the tutorial note, as you can say, you can refer to as the ISA 610 using the work of internal auditors, uh, for example, talking about the working papers as I just mentioned before. You can always refer to as the ISO 402, uh, so for example, uh, as the service organization, Flack & Co, here it will be the service organization. We may provide the Type 1 or Type 2 report to Manhattan Co. Okay, so uh, this could be extra fees charged okay, to the external auditor later on. Okay, so you can always bring that in your answer. So make sure not only you've got the exam technique, but also your ISA knowledge will be fine, so you can bring all these bits and pieces all together to score high marks in this particular exam. But trust me, you can't simply pass this paper with only one sentence that you've made. For example, working papers will need to consider access to working papers full stop. You can't even get any marks related to it. So make sure that you follow the appropriate steps in your answer in our course. Let's look at the next requirement is the payment to fictitious suppliers of how we're going to check it. So all we can do is to first of all focusing on the approved suppliers list. So uh, because when we add the approved supplier nowadays it could be added directly by the system. So, for example, for if you are working in a large company, so for example, the public listed companies, you will see the procedures could be uh, the large company would outsource the uh, supplier database uh, and tendering to the external third party. It's up to the external third party to review carefully of each of the suppliers uh, before they are added to the supplies database or we can call it as the approved supplies list. And this is particularly important because if you don't have this practical experience, the points that you've made would not be as high quality and that's why you will need to have practical experience to pass the part C. And therefore what we could do is to inspect or review the procedure of how they add the approved supplier to the database. So the reason why we're going to do it is to help identify how many supplies have been added by the account manager. Because if the account manager has added five approved suppliers in the lists, 
And certain the five suppliers may have certain problems of being fictitious in its nature. So you're going to be seeing the procedures first of all, who added and how they are added. Second, we're going to inspect the payments, or we can use the word review the payments approved by the account manager, of how much that they've, but that that the account manager is approved to make payments directly from a company to his own bank account. So we're going to compare that with the supplies paid in the approved supplies list, because obtain that list if there are five supplies being paid and certainly they could be implying some problems. So this will help identify unapproved suppliers paid and the amounts paid to them. Okay, so that's the second step. The first step you can use CAT or we can call it the computer assisted auditing techniques. We can quickly filter the same bank account details as the account manager has. So for example, your, your account manager has this bank account naming 600-AOO-M5002. Right, we're going to filter that to see how many supplies with the same bank account. If this is the case, okay, I can filter three of them having the same bank account detail and I can reasonably uh, assume that three supplies, these three supplies may have problems here. Next one, we're going to inspect or review the supply statement's completeness. Uh, because we see the supply statement, supplies think the amount of money that we owe to them compared to what we paid. So, for example, it supplies things that are owed 1 million to them, but actually that we've paid 1.2 million. That 0.2 million may have been fictitious, paying to the account manager's bank account directly. Because the fictitious supplies will not have supplied a statement. Sometimes it will not be the case, but uh, sometimes it will have. So, for example, the supplier may set up uh, a fake company and supplying the statement to the company as well. And also for each supplier, we're going to be checking the invoice received and we're going to be seeing the invoice detail agreeing back to the purchase order delivery note because we receive goods from a supplier before we pay for it. And therefore we're going to check that the delivery note including the signature on that and also the time sheets or the service sheet, if for any supplies they are not providing the tangible goods, they are providing the intangible services, we can check that. And if none of the above source documents can be found, and it is likely the supply is fake or fictitious, okay? Because you haven't got the source documents. And also, we're going to be checking because we're going to confirm the amount of losses they're going to suffer. So, not only you suffer losses, but you can also get the reimbursement from the insurance company. So, we're going to be reviewing the terms of insurance to cover uh, what sort of reimbursements that we can claim back from the insurance company as well. So, we're going to review the terms of insurance and to confirm the amount of losses that can be reduced by that particular extent. We can also talk about it with management and the solicitors and to see whether or not the account manager will pay back certain amounts of expenditure or money back to the MACO. Okay? So this will reduce the amount of losses that they can suffer. I would say it's quite practical. So therefore, according to my experience, for the part C here, four marks, well, your aim would be to achieve two out of four point. So if you've got time, you can write five procedures and that could be fine. So one is not as high quality as it seems, uh, but um, another one will be seen as high quality. So you will never be punished in this particular exam. You will get zero marks or one mark uh, in this particular requirement. Now, how about part dot then? First of all, 
sage to examine the responsibilities of external auditor and management to detect the fraud and we can always bring the content within the ISA 240 so for example uh, management will be primarily responsible for the internal controls so using the two step here because it's the comparison question you include your description and then you're going to explain your detail so for example you can use the word this means that for example however or this is because okay to support your point so for example by setting up a good system would reduce the opportunities for fraud okay and establishing a culture would persuade individuals not to commit the fraud okay and yeah you can uh, be talking about that having the sound system to reduce fraud and to have a healthy culture on the other hand when talking about the recommendations by other auditors yes we can improve the internal controls per the recommendations that given by the external auditor but we're going to say to the examiner it's not their responsibility to put the recommendations into practice so usually they will put them in the management letter and it's up to the board to decide where not to implement their recommendations auditors on the other hand is responsible to check the risks of material misstatement and therefore they are not focusing on the operational fraud because operational fraud for example who is late and so on uh, which supplies that we've chosen and so on may not have a material impact on the client's financial statement so the auditors they have secondary responsibilities focusing on the risks of material misstatement Auditors are focusing on the material items, as I said in the ISA 240 before, uh, the fraud that you've detected now may be material at some point in the future. And therefore, currently, they may not be material, and therefore, they may be ignored by the auditors. But management and auditors would be quite similar in trying to look at the internal controls for example so because both of them should assess whether or not controls are strong so for auditors they will need to check this during the planning stage okay to determine the audit methodologies that they can adopt so either to use control tests plus a bit substantive tests alternatively if they found that the control system are rubbish or weak they would use the full substantive tests later on in checking the numbers of the client's entity finally we're going to be assessing the benefits and drawbacks in establishing an audit committee we're going to be including four steps here what describe the benefit why and case information as what we've seen before now clearly say to the examiner there will be benefits and drawbacks so for example benefit we can build financial statements trusts so you're going to be including in your step number two uh, because the audit committee uh, in our previous chapter will check the financial statements for the property of financial statements where not they are lying in other words so why this will be a case is because it's their job and they need to communicate with the external auditor if they find out the financial statements are wrong by the audit committee 
Applying to the case, for example, fraudulent transactions took place inside the business, and this is why this could be a benefit uh, to the macro. The second point I'd like to make is it can build a stronger control environment. Okay? So because the, it's their job, it's the audit committee's job to oversee the control part in macro. So why this would be important then? Well, a better control environment, especially in a family-based company, will certainly stop some errors, stopping some fraudulent transactions. So reduce the business risks. And certainly inside the business nowadays, uh, to Macro, Lindsay and the audit team, internal audit team, directly report to the finance director, which is not appropriate in this particular instance. And also it's good for raising finance, okay? So your description would be to help the growth of the business by raising finance. Why this is important? Yes, raising finance to deal with shortage of cash. And currently, in Maco, lack funds to support its operations and so on. And therefore, it will certainly solve a bit of problems related to fund. And also another uh, benefit will be the competence, because the audit committee members have experience. And it's very important that this is still a family company, and it's quite a small company compared to other, other large, larger entities. And their experience will help growth okay, of the business. And bringing to the case, well, this is the family-based company. So not only you need to benefit from the internal expertise, but external expertise, such as the members bringing the expertise uh, to your business would be quite invaluable. How about drawbacks? I would say, first of all, it's hard to recruit members. So members, especially the diversity, is quite tough. So, uh, for example, uh, here in Hong Kong, according to the latest stock exchange requirements in setting up the board, you will need to bring diversity, including the number of women and so on, to your board. It cannot be all men. Okay? So, that will be quite difficult in nature. And, um, why this, is in, uh, why this is quite difficult is simply because there are quite few people who are highly qualified with relevant expertise. And bringing the case information on the, the industry is specific. And therefore, we may need to consider to recruit members with a diverse or different background to this particular company. Okay? So therefore, the fees that we need to pay will be quite high. The fees could be in nature, uh, could be one of the problems here. So for example, we can talk about the fees could be high. And why this is important, because the fees we should talk about it in relation to, the, to their background. 
and because we are short in shortage of cash and uh, we've got cash flows problem, funding problem and whether or not we still have enough money in setting up the audit committee because uh, according to most requirements in the stock exchange an audit committee should comprise at least three non-executive directors who are highly skilled and one of them should have recent financial expertise and all of them should be independent. Finally, because you are assessing it, you're going to make a conclusion for that, will be one sentence, simple sentence, will be fine. So here, we recommend the internal audit function should be outsourced and audit committee should be set up okay, uh, in your answer. Now we finish off this particular case and uh, as you can see, the way that we deal with the uh, actual questions will be quite different. Okay? And therefore we will use our own approach into helping you pass your exam. I'm going to stop this tape here and I'm going to be seeing you in the next of our section. We'll be covering uh, another case regarding the... ISA 240. APC, accounting for your future.